So let me begin my Foundation Day address by showing you a short film that we sent to all our new students who arrived a few weeks ago to welcome them to the university and to tell them a little about us. Now is the turning point of your life. Trepidation lingers as the familiar disappears, but embrace it. Revel in the tangled anxiety of the unknown. Great things await those that go in search. Manchester, this great city of trailblazing innovation, where revolutions find their heart and culture finds its soul, will subvert your expectations in the years approaching. These are the years where you'll discover who you are, the years where you'll start tackling society's biggest challenges and begin to make a difference to the world and the people around us. And if there's one thing we can guarantee, you too will change. You will grow. You'll come into a place that enables, empowers, inspires. A place that helps you realise the dreams that are sown here where your journey will intertwine and align with the paths of others, where the friendships you forge will last a lifetime. Here is a place where you'll grow to stand shoulder to shoulder with giants, side by side with friends. Break conventions, discover new ways of being curious, carve your own path. Pioneer your way of doing things because your way is the Manchester way. Whether you're coming from near or far, welcome to the University of Manchester. A sentence that particularly resonates from that film is a place where revolutions find their heart and culture finds its soul. Manchester was, of course, very much at the heart of the Industrial Revolution. Devising new machines, building steam railways, and creating one of the world's first modern canal systems. But Manchester has been home not just to pioneers or industrial magnates, but also to social revolutionaries. The Chartist movement burgeoned in Manchester and the first trade unions. Vegetarianism, public libraries, the suffragette movement all began here. Engels met with Marx and developed his social ideas. In Manchester's Albert Club, just over there on the site of our new National Graphene Institute. As Disraeli reportedly said, what Manchester does today, the rest of the world does tomorrow. This university was born out of this revolutionary spirit and is proud to share the heritage. And we have continued with an ambitious and challenging vision and plan, particularly since 2004. When I was appointed as President and Vice-Chancellor in 2010, I was determined to maintain this revolutionary spirit and ambition, while taking account of the fact that we were in a very different world from that in 2004. Hence, we established Manchester 2020, describing our three core goals and underpin underpinning themes. Today, we formally launch a refreshed and updated Manchester 2020. This builds on our original plan and sets new demanding targets that continue to take account of the many changes that have taken place over the past decade across society and the higher education sector. And it also recognizes our likely future challenges. Foundation Day is a time to reflect on achievements of the past and on our ambitions and challenges for the future. There is no doubt that British universities face significant pressures from an increasingly intense international competition in research and education, from growing costs, from marked changes in global economies, and from the government's comprehensive spending review, which will be announced next month. But this is a day of celebration, so I think it's appropriate to focus on our successes and future opportunities. In spite of some challenges, we have in fact met a number of the ambitious goals we first set out in 2004 we've more than doubled our external research and contract income, increased our gift income by tenfold, markedly improved student satisfaction, increased graduate employment from 67% in 2004 to over 85% today. We've enhanced collaboration with industry. We have more income from UK industry than any other British university. 
We've transformed our campus, attracted world-leading scholars, and significantly increased the number of students from less privileged backgrounds. Just in the last year, our competitive research income increased by more than 20%. We had more applications for undergraduate study than any other UK university. Several spectacular new buildings were open. Jodrell Bank was designated the international he headquarters of the Square Kilometre Array, the world's largest scientific collaborative project, and for the first time, our income topped a billion pounds. Continued ambition is essential for our future success. But with finite resource, we must focus on our strengths if we are to be a great rather than just a good university. With thousands of universities across the world, and well over 100 in the UK alone, we need to clearly position, clearly explain what is truly distinctive about our research, our graduates, our influence, and our impact. International recognition and engagement is an ever more important measure of our success. Our popularity with international students, we now have over 10,000 more than any other UK university, is one reflection of our global reputation. Creating a truly international campus in a very diverse city. The vibrancy and regeneration of the city and the University of Manchester and our imaginative plans are indeed putting us on the world radar. Our university, our discoveries and our spin-out successes are attracting interests and investments of business and universities from China, the Middle East, the United States and Australia, to name but a few. This university shares much in com common with its host city and benefits greatly from our shared ambition. The Victoria University of Manchester was one of the first red bricks, reshaping a formerly elitist model of higher education and widening it for ordinary people of all backgrounds. Today, this is still true. Social responsibility is one of our three goals, and it's manifest in our key activities. In Mossside and in local communities, we've created the works which has supported more than 3,500 people to find employment and training at the university and with other local employers. Our school governors programme, working with 160 schools across the region, has won national and international awards. Our social responsibility policies are also realised in our major campus redevelopment. It's a condition of procurement that architects and builders must employ a high percentage of local people and take on apprentices. Many of these activities are in close partnership with our students' union. Great examples of this partnership are student volunteering and the award-winning We Get It campaign to raise awareness and to tackle all forms of harassment. And this has recently received significant acclaim in the press. Equality and diversity are important com commitments of the university. Recently, we were one of a handful of universities to be awarded the Race Equality Charter Mark. We've made progress in diversity in our leadership. If you consider the chair of our board, Anil Rua, myself as still one of rather few female vice chancellors, the general secretary of the Students' Union, Na Aqua, and of course, our chancellor. But as the university that appointed the first black professor in the UK, the economist Arthur Lewis, we still have a lot more to do to increase diversity among staff and are working to deliver the plans that we described in our race charter. Our activities impact on many of our closest neighbours, which represent some of the least advantaged communities in the country. Hence, the university is a major contributor to the social as well as the economic growth of the city and is also contributing to the physical transformation of Manchester. Over the last decade, the university has metamorphosed into a 21st century vibrant space of glass and steel, sitting alongside some of our beautiful and carefully restored older buildings and ever-growing public spaces, walkways and greenery. We are bringing our staff and students together onto the Oxford Road by relocating from the North Campus as part of our £1 billion plus campus master plan. Soon you will be able to stroll down a car-free Oxford Road with wider pavements and tree-lined boulevards. You can already visit our Whitworth Gallery, just recently designated Museum of the Year, 
in 2015 and shortlisted for the Sterling Prize. Decision tomorrow. The Whitworth combines the revolutionary qualities of Manchester, a classical Victorian frontage and a visionary glass back, free to all and built in the heart of the community. We're planning a multi-million pound new student village and a new hotel behind the Manchester Business School, which itself is undergoing a major refurbishment, supported by a very generous donation from Lord Alliance. Hence, our MBS is now named the Alliance Manchester Business School. But a university is very much more than a stunning campus. We're also committed to being a people-oriented organization, supporting our staff and providing an outstanding experience for our students, the largest on-campus population of students in the country. Our efforts have been rewarded with improved student satisfaction scores, but we still have more to do to achieve our aim of 90% satisfaction across all of our students. We're the most, most popular university for undergraduate study and the most targeted university by Britain's top graduate employers. We're now going to deliver a new targeted approach to student experience, offering our students an integrated scheme that allows them to take advantage of a range of programs outside their own degree, to be called the My Manchester Award. This will include activities such as international study, social responsibility projects, training in leadership and entrepreneurship, volunteering and, and, and internships. So students will experience real, real world challenges as soon as they join us. We believe that this will provide the ingredients to make the student experience at Manchester truly distinctive and transformative. When our students graduate, they become lifelong members of the university as they join our community of over 300,000 alumni across the world. Many of these alumni are outstanding supporters of the university through philanthropy and by generously giving their time to help our students, particularly those from less advantaged backgrounds. Amongst those alumni are many honorary graduates selected because of their great achievements and contributions to society. We're delighted to be honoring five more today. World-class research, which includes the discovery of new knowledge and its application, is fundamental to our university. It is the main driver of international reputation. We aspire to be in the top 25 universities in the world. We've progressed from being in the low 70s in 2004 to now in the low 40s and we are in the top five in the UK. Progress is encouraging, but we have much more to do to achieve our ambitious goal, which is outlined in the plans of our new research strategy. But rankings and league tables tell us only one part of the story, and they don't define who we are or the impact of our research. When Alan Turing created the first calculating machine at the root of future digital technology, or Ernest Rutherford split the atom to redefine modern physics, or Mary Stopes transformed the lives of women and families, they were not motivated by breaking records, league tables, or fame. They wanted to so solve fundamental problems in society and to revolutionize progress. Among the huge range of excellent research in the university, we've identified five focus areas, five beacons of research. Each is an area of excellence for the university with both depth and breadth, which also represents a global challenge. I'll just give you a few brief words on these. Our first is advanced materials. Manchester was built on a material. Cotton put it at the center of the trading world. Graphene has the potential to be even more revolutionary as the world's thinnest, strongest, and most conductive material. Andre Geim and Kostya Novoselov isolated graphene in Manchester and won the Nobel Prize in 2010. Its potential is huge in sensors, transport, filters, biomedicine, to name but a few. The National Graphene Lab Institute, a stunning super lab, has already stimulated public and private financing and attracted scholars from around the world. We're now building the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center, the GEEK, with significant international investment. We were selected by P BP as the home to their International Center for Advanced Materials and have a renowned materials characterization facility. 
In December 2014, the Chancellor George Osborne announced a quarter of a billion pound investment in the Sir Henry Royce Institute for Materials and Research and Innovation to be based in Manchester but in close partnership with several other leading UK universities. The Chancellor described it as one of the most significant science centres in the UK. Our second and third beacons are also rooted in industry and innovation. They are industrial biotechnology and energy, both appropriate for a city whose wealth came from steam that powered the cotton mills and the Liverpool to Manchester railway and ship canal. Our leading biotechnology centre is at the forefront of a European industrial renaissance, creating the next generation of chemicals, limiting dependency on traditional fuels and discovering new ways to understand complex systems. We excel in energy research, a fundamental global resource and a touchstone for conflict when its supply is in doubt. It is pressing that we find alternatives to natural resources that are being used up as populations and industries grow. Our experts are guiding the UK strategy and at our Dalton Nuclear Institute, researching a range of renewable energy sources and are working closely with the national grid on delivering energy. Our fourth and fifth beacons, cancer and addressing global inequalities, focus directly on people. Our new Manchester Cancer Research Centre building with the Christie NHS Foundation Trust and Cancer Research UK provides researchers with outstanding facilities for conquering cancer, one of the most pernicious diseases of the 21st century. Our work is not only blue skies, and as just one example, a major endocrine therapy for breast cancer and astrazole was trialled at the university and has already benefited more than one and a half million women globally. Our final research beacon, addressing global inequalities, reminds us that Nobel Prizes, citations of our research and high rankings have little relevance to those at war experiencing devastating natural disasters in extreme poverty or in major conflicts. We have one of the largest collections of researchers in poverty, disaster management, and in international development, which influence policymakers, organizations, and corporations to help people in crisis. We've just launched our Global Development Institute, including our groundbreaking Rory and Elizabeth Brooks Doctoral College. Our experts were an influential voice in the lead up to the recent United Nations gathering in New York to agree long-term goals to eradicate world poverty. For each of these beacons and many more areas of outstanding research across the university, we also want to make sure that we make a real difference. Of course, we must grasp wider opportunities. One of the greatest of these is the devolution of powers and budgets to Greater Manchester, including the £6 billion annual budget for health. And Manchester is the first city outside of London to take control over transport, health, housing, planning and police. This is attracting great attention, bringing visitors and investors to the region and helping us to address the imbalance in health and wealth between many parts of the north of England and some parts of the UK. Next year, we have an opportunity to showcase some of our research. We will host ESOF, Euroscience Open Forum, Europe's largest science conference, with many public activities as well as academic and business sessions. We chose as the title for the conference, Science as Revolution in part reflecting the opportunities and challenges that we face in research and higher education in society in the 21st century, but also reflecting the great history of the city of Manchester and the university. In the next decade, it's important to maintain far-reaching visions that are understood and shared with you, our supporters, and more widely. We must explain clearly what difference our education makes to our students, and what difference our research makes to the world with the passion and conviction of those early Manchester scholars and inventors. We must be clear and focused about what we are doing, where we excel and where the challenges are. Our students, our research and our impact on society are the keys to our future. A future that must build on the revolutionary spirit of this great city, on our own history of success and on our founders' vision, but which also looks forward with ambition. Our very personality, 
is defined by this revolutionary spirit, impelling us to find solutions to some of the world's greatest challenges, while at the same time meeting the wider needs of society. This is Manchester. Here we break convention, we forge revolution, we try our best to make a difference. Thank you.